This is the annual reorganization meeting on the stand for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to this flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First order of business, I just want to announce that I have the oath of office for our newly elected board members. Mary Beth Sweeney and James Boglioli, who can't be here tonight, on file in the district clerk's office. The next order of business is to vote for the president and vice president for the new school year. So I would take nominations for president first. I'd like to nominate Mike Sheets for president. Is there any further nominations? Having heard none, we can cast a ballot for Mr. Fuchs for president. We will now take nominations for vice president. I'd like to nominate Matt Scott for vice president. There are no further nominations for vice president. We will cast a ballot for Mr. Scott for vice president. My job is done tonight, Mr. Fuchs. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't want to continue? No. <laughs> um, Next on the agenda is the code of conduct. Do you have a copy to pass around? Yes. Okay. Let the board's code of conduct be. Let's see, look at it and sign it. Okay. All right. So uh, just make a comment on that. Uh, in our packet, we have a board that has a history of code of conduct that they can present to the council on December the 8th and they also have one to sign and we'll post on the website. Uh, I do just want to make note, uh, these are pretty much standard year to year. Um, the VAS are the Good News for All Student Act Coordinators. Uh, Mr. Michelle's name should be replaced with Ashley Bible. Everything else I believe is pretty standard. Um, not if there's any questions. Uh, the financials for May are here. A couple things I did want to note. The uh, New York State passed a law now that if you qualify for a reduced lunch, you don't have to pay the 25 cent fee. Probably what happened, you know, the 25 cent fee was probably half of what a lunch cost many years ago when that was instituted. Now with lunches being over $2 basically, um, it really became more of a paperwork and nuisance to collect. So you still have to, the federal program still requires us collecting the data for the two income levels for free and reduced. And the federal government um, still isn't paying us for the 25 cents, but New York State will. So we will get that information out prior to the end of the summer as that information starts to get out to the community. Uh, 
Uh, I do want to mention building fire inspections happened also at the end of May, and everything passed on that. Um, our bond anticipation note, the borrowing for our buses, we received an interest rate of just over 1.5%. Uh, next item is typically we use our end of year money for musical instrument bids. And we've got a total of $78,000 worth of musical instruments that we'd like to approve tonight to all the low bidders. I did put all the backup in there from some of those instruments I've never heard of. And just so you know what they are. Um, Mr. Sheets, maybe if you'd want to take a vote on those two items. So is there any questions on uh, F1, the standard financial reports and requests, or F2, the music bid? If not, can I get a motion to approve those? Second. I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Okay. The, the next item we have um, to try to get a general consensus of the board is a potential capital project. The timing of a project uh, is important if we want to call it budget neutral as old debt um, is relieved from the budget. So that's what the timing of this would be. If we had a vote, <coughs> excuse me, uh, approximately December 3rd, we would need to start the secret process at the state environmental assessment review and other forms that have to be done um, right away. So the bonding attorneys uh, would have to get that going. The um, $27.2 million recommendation, uh, I know we've talked to the board about this and we've massaged it, we've done um, uh, reviews of the facilities, does come to a budget neutral estimate when this takes place in the 21-22 school year. I uh, included the list of 94 items that makes up the 27.2 million. The actual funding would be approximately $700,000 left over from what the state calls Excel monies, which is dollar for dollar of what you spend on um, capital improvements such as these. Uh, $1 million fund balance contribution from the district, and then 20, about 25 and a half million of borrowed funds. And our best estimate now with what would be included, the vast majority of that would be fully aided. Um, we are guessing at least 95% um, of that will be aided. And with enhanced and lower interest rates than our original estimate, uh, we certainly do believe that this is a, a, our best guess to stay budget neutral. So um, I did also include a list of our past projects. Um, every single project that we've had has been under budget. And um, so what that typically means is we either turn money back to the debt reserve, which we have, which could also fund some of this throughout the years if the age doesn't match the debt payment exactly, um, or you borrow less. So for example, the last project that we had in 2014, we borrowed approximately $100,000 less um, than the um, community's approval. Another thing I wanted to pass around is just from the last project, we do do a nice little brochure um, for the project. You know, should uh, this come to a vote uh, after the seeker is done at the end of the summer or possibly September, and a project is going to be put up to vote, Something along these lines, which is very informative to the community, would be something we'd recommend. So tonight, again, there's no formal resolution that would come once the seeker is done, um, but we do need a consensus. The scope and amount of that seeker cannot be increased once they've started. Um, certainly, uh, it can be re reduced. You know, so if there's something here that um, prior to the publication of the vote, which is basically 60 days in advance of the vote date, um, you can reduce what's in there. Just a couple questions or observations, just to clarify. So um, when we met last time, obviously we had a different number and we were debating a number of elements that could potentially uh, help from a funding 
perspective uh, or um, maybe reduce spending, reduce some, some cost options to reduce the cost side. So we've con confirmed the Excel money is available and we do have enough uh, elements to the project to use the full 700,000. Correct. And then this does include the addition of all the um, building uh, entrance modifications, including front and back at the high school. Yes, it does. Security. And the, uh, the architectural firm that was recently appointed, um, you know, took a look at what was done a year ago when we were building the survey, and they revised some of those numbers. So it, it was able, we were able to reduce some of those. Question. The state aid ratio is, is about two-thirds, 67 percent. That's been pretty standard. It's been pretty years. standard. Yeah. You know, I, over the last 20 years, when we took a look at it, I don't think we've ever dipped below about 65, and it hits 71. It's always right in that range. And uh, the next opportunity where bonds would drop off and we'd be budget neutral is about eight years. From yes. Now. So it's that's and that would be a smaller uh, right. bond anyway. Right. Uh, what year would the um, the fund balance that we'd need to contribute kick in? Is that this this year or is it the following year? It really wouldn't be until um, the spring of 2021 okay. when something would start where we'd have to actually start paying contractors. Okay. Can I ask a question? Um, I have a question. Yes. Um, yes. And uh, the BOCES expense would be um, and, and it's an odd thing with BOCES, they are giving the aid in the same year you make the expense. So, well, we have three separate year, consecutive years of about 500,000. The BOCES aid for us would be close to 60%. So it, it's only gonna net us a cost of, you know, 150 or 170,000. Yeah, just uh, refreshing my memory. Um, all the elements recommended by the committee, which I shouldn't say all, but the premise of being neutral uh, coming forward and excluding some of these additional uh, elements because of the cost at the time, we've basically taken their recommendation but added to it with some of these additional funds. I know we've removed some small items on the main maintenance list, if you will. Is right. That correct? Yes, the committee's basic recommendation is here, and a couple of the items, like the building reconfiguration front, they weren't 100%, uh, didn't receive 100% consensus, consensus, but the committee, uh, many members had a strong feeling for it, and that's why at the presentation from the committee, we wanted to review those items with the board and keep it on your radar. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? So not a formal vote, but do we have a general consensus that the tax cap neutral a proposal uh, of $27.2 million not to exceed it is agreeable for you to go forward? Absolutely. Okay. Great. Great. Thank you. Proceed. Thank you. Is that uh, all for you, Mr. Murphy? Yes. Mr. Mich Michelle. We have some informational items that outline rate changes for the next school year. Uh, the appointment of the new middle school principal and the salary superintendent this evening. Um, two probationary teacher appointments, the appointment of department chair for psychologists, approval of all of the sports coaching positions, appointments for extracurricular appointments for both the high school and the middle school, mentor at school new administrator, two teachers for summer home instruction, weekly for Zoom instructors for the high school, Approval of the summer community education courses for Mr. Mancuso, various presentation compensation, a request for summer curriculum projects from Mrs. Overholt, the appointment of a librarian for the high school summer school, and a series of resolutions, one of which changes the title for Mrs. Overholt, and the personal service agreements for both Mrs. Overholt and Mr. Mancuso. At your plate is a yellow packet that is an addendum to the instructional portion make a correction to one of the teacher changes, uh, the removal of a club that we'll bring back to you, uh, that appointment in August, approval for compensation for PCI training, and in addition to the list that Mrs. Overholt provided for more summer curriculum projects, 
and a summer school teacher at Penn State. That will be back next month. Oh. Is there any questions on uh, instructional personnel items P1 to P8? Ms. Ron, can I get a motion to approve uh, P1 to P8? Instructional, we have a series of resignations, one of which is a bus driver in Mr. Long has served our district for 12 years. Uh, request for leave of absence and extensions of leaves of absence. Uh, change in status of a little bit of additional time for our nurses to cover some of our student needs. Uh, one bus driver appointment. Approval of summer appointments for aides, monitors, and bus attendants. Uh, just one informational item of a facility needs change for our new building. have any idea uh, I know we're, we're always struggling with bus drivers how, how much of a void we have to fill before the school year I'm not sure we are we're, we're actually doing pretty well um, you know this is I think the third person that we received from North Waynesville Lake Group contacting us so uh, we're doing pretty good we've we've got um, more campaign for radio ads and things like that going this summer uh, Linda the supervisor is pounding the pavement. You may have seen posters at local businesses um, all up and down all of our area and all the neighboring areas. So we're doing pretty well, actually. Any questions on items P9 to P15? If none, can I get a motion to approve the non-instructional? So moved. Do I have a second? All those in favor? needs and student activities uh, there's some extra items because this is the July meeting for special education so first there's recommendations from the committee on special ed there were since the last time the board voted there were 255 additional meetings for end of the year reviews and annual reviews for next year there were another 10 for preschoolers also this month the board votes on CSE and CSPE members. Those are mostly administrators and teachers and psychologists. Uh, also vote on impartial hearing officers, surrogate parents, and designations for an, who can initiate a, a referral for special education. They're all in the packet. Any questions or concerns on uh, items S1 to S6? Motion to approve. Do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. That carries. All right, board development. This is traditionally the meeting where board members make choices for the committees from the Erie County School Boards Association. So um, I think we're pretty close on having that slate filled, but how would you like to do it, Mr. Fuchs? Do you want to kind of go through them one at a time or I'll just review the list and for the record, get names. So, go ahead. Go through one at a yeah, time. Go ahead. The voting delegate uh, right now is Mike, and Dawn is the alternate. That's fine. The delegate assembly rep for ECASD. The delegate is, well, the rep is Krishna, and Dawn is the alternate. Okay, with that. Budget and finance. Matt is the lead person and Dennis is the alternate. That's fine. You're making this too easy. So <laughs> the legislative, Matt is the rep and Dennis is the alternate. That we flipped that. Yeah. You're flipped, yeah, you want to flip, flip that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Oh, it was put for last yeah. year. Yeah, it was put during the meeting. And you want to keep it explicit. Then yes. it will be in the map. Right. Yes. And then there is the um, liaison at the PTO. Uh, do you want me to go through those? Yeah, you can run down the list. I think we have the ones James was mad about. So James is Clarence Center, Chris at Harris Hill, Dennis is Sheridan Hill, Matt is Ledgeview, uh, Krista is off shore at that Chris Hill, that makes sense. Mike is Setsa, and Dawn is Zisa, and then um, John Fiskus was the middle school. So we just replaced? Yeah. Okay. Okay, uh, next item, we're asking for approval for the traditional Clarence Center fifth grade field trip to Camp Seneca Lake in June 2020. Any questions on this trip? If none, could we get a motion to approve these four? I have a second. Second. All those in favor? There is an informational item in the packet that lists all of the pending field trips that are overnight stays for the high school, and it gives the board an overview of those, and as they come about a couple months in advance, we'll provide them in the agenda. Um, last Very helpful. <laughs> thank you. Uh, we did make a cut. We had a committee made up of assistant principals and guidance counselors who looked over the code of conduct and made some very small modifications to it. In the board's packet, the changes are listed in red. Basically, it adds the Family Support Center as a referral action. It makes, um, has a couple of grammar error changes in it, and it outlines what an SRO can do within the Code of Conduct. Does anybody have any questions before we adopt the Code of Conduct for the coming school year? If none, can I get a motion to approve item B5? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Carried. That brings us to our second public comment session for this evening. Again, microphones on either end if you'd like to state your name and address for the record and welcome your comments. Good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Tim Glaude. I live on Michael Douglas Drive. I think I'm probably on record since this is the third meeting I've been to. I think the fourth meeting I attend this year, I win a set of steak knives. So <laughs> come, come August, I'll be looking forward to that. So, uh, just want to thank everyone uh, again for your consideration. I know you've heard me a couple times in the past. I uh, just want to thank you for that. And again, just ask that there's some conversation, discussions, just reviewing the relevance of the current policy that's in place, not allowing seventh graders to play in varsity activity, along not allowing eighth graders to play in JV sports. So I would just ask you to, again, have some conversations. Let's see if that's even a relevant policy to have in place. If there's maybe some areas of improvement, somewhere we can tweak it. Um, maybe it's about time we, we look at that since it's been in place for, for some time now. So uh, thanks again. I'll be looking forward to those steak knives. <laughs> and uh, I'll be here in August. Should we have them ready? Is, it, is the next one's August? I'll, I'll be there. Yes. And you have my address. So yes, just that's Amazon. True, we do. Amazon Prime Week. So take advantage <laughs> of that. You can ship them direct. I am not, I am not an employee of Amazon. So <laughs> no, am I endorsing that at all? So but let, yes. Let me just make one comment. Yes, uh, appreciate the, the, the comments you've made over the last few months. Um, as you know, we've switched athletic directors effective sure. July 1st. Sure. I know Dr. Hicks um, had a meeting uh, last week. And uh, I've met with Dr. Hicks on Friday and have asked that uh, the board uh, kind of get a review uh, assessment, if you will, on the current policy and any recommended changes, how it looks compared to other districts and certain things we might consider. <coughs> I know independently we've all been doing our own research. Um, obviously, with it not on the agenda, we didn't feel like we had enough that we were going to prepare to act at this point, but mm -hmm. that's kind of where we stand. Sure. Okay. Okay, well, thanks for the update. I appreciate that. Hi, I'm Dave Steffen, 10,005 Clarence Center Road. 
Um, the girls, uh, Clarence Varsity coach for soccer. Um, I wanted to offer myself, if you want to put together some kind of subcommittee, I'd be happy to volunteer on that with other coaches. Um, I think we have some good insight that may help you make your decisions better. Um, and I just wanted to offer that. Okay. Thanks very Thank much. You. Hi, I'm Kevin Dean. I live on Valley Hope Lake Drive. Um, I just wanted to back up what uh, Mr. Glaub was saying. Uh, my daughter is uh, heading into seventh grade as an avid golfer and is watching her friends from other districts go and play high school golf. And if Clarence is now uh, does not have that ability, she would like to play. Um, and I think it would help her to develop both as uh, a person as an, uh, a student athlete. So I hope you do take that very seriously. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Erin Booker. I'm a phys ed teacher at the middle school, and I'm the varsity girls basketball coach. Um, I thank Tim Glaude for coming up here and getting a lot of this initiated. Uh, there are a number of coaches here today that are interested, and I'm sure that there's some that couldn't make it tonight uh, that would be here as well. Uh, we want you to understand that we're, we're not looking to bring tons of kids up and to cut kids at different levels. We don't like to cut kids. Um, we're looking for maybe a number that you could say maybe two might, might be appropriate to bring up to the JV level. Um, we, there's situational problems that occur with our teams throughout different seasons. And for instance, I have two very good ball handlers, excellent point guards that will be going into eighth grade um, next year. And my JV team doesn't have a point guard. So I have two of them that are left on modified none on JV, the team will struggle. Um, and it just, to me, doesn't make sense that one of them, two of them aren't allowed to come up there um, to help that team out. We had a similar situation in softball a couple years ago where there were six pitchers on the modified softball team. Um, if you know our numbers on modified, there's about 18 to 20 kids on the team. Um, the JV softball team didn't have a pitcher and those six pitchers stayed on modified and the JV team struggled. So in situations like that, it just doesn't really make sense. Um, we're, we're asking you maybe to come up with a number instead of saying, yes, go ahead, let as many eighth graders as you want to play up there, but just to contemplate, you know, maybe we'll set the standard at two. And there may be years that we don't have any eighth graders that are, are, are good enough to play JV. Um, it's really a situational thing, but I thank you for listening. Todd McVitie, Clarence, Golden Rock Court. Um, I've been following this for a few months and was helping out a few of these guys here. Um, and we started this process three, four months ago with hopes that we'd have some action by now, right? Um, and things, and I understand things move slow and you need to do research, but we followed the process. We gave ample time. So um, every sport here is gonna have a different ask or a different need, you know, so this sport needs this or that sport needs that. So I'd like to just ask, like, from an actionable point, when can we expect this to go to vote? We kind of expected it to be at vote today. Um, obviously, that didn't happen. Um, you know, it's, we want this to move along. You know, we're the only district or uh, um, school in section six that has this, right? So. Um, you know, I personally think, I'm not gonna tell you stories about my kid and how good he is or how good he isn't, right? Um, but I think it holds some of the kids back. Um, you know, there's many intangibles out there that these kids can carry through to the workforce that they're not gonna get, right? Um, but I just wanna hear what the next step is. Is it, are we waiting till August here? Are we waiting till December, if you can kind of give us some feedback, that would help because we sent letters in and we didn't get anything back, right? So I think you owe that to us to kind of give us some expectations. So with regards to the process, I don't know if we could put a timeline to it. I don't think it'd be fair to anybody. Um, well, I think it'd be fair to us. I mean, well, we so, so let me say this. Started it three months I've ago. I've been on the board for- um, Some more feedback. This will be my eighth year. The year before I got on the board, there was 
a great deal of debate and discussion, which, quite frankly, I wasn't participating. Right. I didn't participate in. I don't know the full breadth of the debate and so forth, but I know it was quite a process that the board went through, and they arrived at this policy. Sure. So, I hear the concerns of those that have come to speak, but we also haven't, I think, cast as wide of a net and just informed us enough to make a decision counter to what was done years ago. Okay. As far as a process goes, we have a policy. Right. So the board sets the policies and we'd have to amend it. So there would have to be somebody on this board that would have to recommend that we change wording and what wording and we'd have to debate the wording and we'd have to come to a consensus on that and you know to any number of comments as far as suggestions on potentially a uh, limit on right. number, um, what sports would be in play, whether it's seventh and eighth graders, whether it's JV or not JV. There's many aspects to this that we're trying to inform ourselves on as opposed to rushing right. to this well, meeting for the fall semester. I mean, I gotta say, you know, not to put you on the spot, Dr. Hicks, but you came from Sweet Home and it's been in place there and it's worked there. I mean, what a great resource mm -hmm. we have right here, right? So, I mean, I don't you know, disagree. If, if you want information, we can pepper you with all the different scenarios. So, um, you know, I just asked some for some more feedback. Um, if there's, you know, a communication channel we should follow or, or you to us, I think that would be helpful. Thank you. Yes. Um, I'm Jason Chase, uh, 83.7 Vernon Circle, uh, Clarence resident. Sheridan Hill phys physical education teacher and the varsity wrestling coach. Um, I know that there's a lot of stuff that goes into, you know, making this decision. And I feel like each sport has something unique and different ways that it affects it. So if we are going to have discussions about this, um, I would love to be involved and give you as much information as I can give on how it, it can affect wrestlers uh, directly, you know, in my sport, um, the advantages of being able to compete in the seventh grade year and their eighth grade year on the varsity level, not even, you know, their development level, but how, you know, their success early in their career can impact them five years down the road. Um, there are a lot of different ways that happens, um, different sports that I feel like maybe their participation at the upper levels really won't affect the ability for the, the upperclassmen to participate in those events. Uh, so if you, you know, would like to talk about it or discuss some different things, I have a lot of information on how I think it could be beneficial to our seventh graders to be able to move up and our eighth graders to be able to move up. Um, so I'd be happy to, to be a part of a committee or anybody that wants to move into further discussion. So thank you. Good evening, everybody. Andrew Gates, 4075 David Road. I'm also the boys' JV coach and also an outsider from the district. I work outside of the district as well and a Sweet Home Panther graduate of 04. Um, so just to echo everybody that said, um, you know, their thoughts around the athletic department and the changes. Uh, the biggest thing I'd like to also kind of point out from a soccer perspective, and this might lead into other sports, is the fact that outside um, organizations are now also recruiting a lot of our town uh, athletes. And with that being said, especially with soccer, uh, the biggest thing is uh, development academies. So a lot of these academies, whether that's uh, a sub team for a professional soccer league or whatever it may be, are giving players options that have that talent ability to either play for the high school or their, their town, or they have to go to a, develop, a development academy. So over the last probably two years or so that I've seen, I've been the coach for three years, we've had three boys, uh, seventh and eighth graders, that had the opportunity to go up to the level of JV or varsity, and unfortunately now they're playing development academy, which does not in, does not allow them to be part of the, the high school program and actually disqualifies them. So just to kind of keep that in mind, that's just for our sport for soccer, uh, but it doesn't go to say that other sports will go down that path as well. And then ultimately we will be losing talent, uh, you know, uh, amongst the community um, and that's what we represent, right? And to echo some of the other coaches, it really does drive good character. When I was over at Sweet Home as a, a member there, I had the opportunity to, from eighth grade, go to JV and it brought me, you know, kind of to understand uh, the morals, the character, what a team is at a different level as I was an eighth grader. And there were other folks that were obviously sophomores, juniors, and seniors as well. So just take that into consideration. Again, every sport might be a little different, but that timeline is ticking in terms of how uh, outside organizations are collecting your kids. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Jennifer Priori. I live at 8954 Amy Lee Lane in Clarence Center. Um, I just wanted to echo some of the sentiments of the folks up here. I would be happy to also join some sort of subcommittee. I'm a pediatric physical therapist. I'm a board certified specialist in that area, so I would be happy to bring those pieces of best practice to the table and the evidence, and to my knowledge, there is no evidence that suggests that once you reach that age of 14 that it would be prohibitive to play with uh, individuals who are older. I would, I would caution the board to treat each sport as, as the same because there are different demands um, placed on the body for each sport and they're all very individualized. And I would also kind of caution, um, I know Mrs. Booker brought up the idea of a limit to kind of like this common ground to start off with, but I would also think that you've hired your coaches and your teachers for a reason and that you could trust, you could trust their judgment is it zero kids you're bringing up? Is it one? Is it two? Maybe you have a year where there's three. And how do you make that? How do you make that cut if you have equal skill among these players? So I think there's a lot of points of of consideration, and I would be happy to participate and lend my expertise in that area as it pertains to the the gross motor aspect of these sports. Thanks. Thank you. Any other comments? that um, in our packet we have a, a list of upcoming meetings <coughs> there are a few of us that are participating in the West New York Education Law Conference on August 7th uh, we have our annual summer retreat on August 20th and then the next regularly scheduled board meeting will be on August 26th here at the high school so with that I would entertain a motion to adjourn to executive session to discuss the employment history of a particular person do I have a motion? Do I have a second? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. We are adjourned.